OpenAI just released the O1 model, aka QSTAR, and it literally destroyed every other model on the benchmark. Guys, I've been testing this non-stop, and let me tell you, it's mind-blowing. This AI is solving problems that no other AI I've ever seen could crack, and I'm not even exaggerating. It's performing at the same level as PhD-level experts in math, coding, and even physics. Seriously, this is not some small incremental improvement over the previous models. This is a huge leap towards AGI. It's like this model just opened a whole new world for language models, so without wasting any more time, let's dive into the details. First things first. Let's talk about the benchmark results. The O1 model did something that everyone thought was impossible. We all know that large language models have not been great at math, and it's understandable. After all, these models are designed to predict the next word or token, which is what they excel at. But when it comes to math, you need reasoning. And up until now, only humans could do math. Literally, no other life form on Earth has been capable of doing math, because they just don't have that level of intelligence. But with OpenEye's O1 model, everything has changed. It can do math that most of us can't even begin to wrap our heads around. Let's start with the benchmark results for the AIM 2024 math competition. GPT-40 scored 13.4, which is pretty unimpressive, to say the least. This result proved what we already knew. LMS just aren't that great with math. GPT-40 is the most powerful language model in existence right now, but it's still terrible at math. Then came O1, and it broke the myth that LMS can't handle math. In the same benchmark, the O1 preview version scored a staggering 56.7, and the full O1 version scored an insane 83.3. That's absolutely mind-blowing. And keep in mind, this test isn't easy. It's a serious math competition, not some basic algebra exam. But that's not all. Let's talk about competitive coding benchmarks. GPT-40 scored a measly 11. Yeah, 11. In contrast, the O1 preview version scored 62, and the full O1 version scored an insane 89. Just think about that for a second. This is a massive leap forward, and if you're a programmer, this should scare you a bit. I mean, it looks like the first people who might lose their jobs to AI are programmers. This isn't just some gimmick or hype. This is real. Now, let me tell you what really blew my mind. In PhD-level science questions, GPT-40 scored 56, which is decent, but not groundbreaking. But get this. One preview scored 78.3 already surpassing human experts. Yeah, you read that right. This AI model is outperforming human PhD-level experts in science. This is a massive deal. I mean, imagine an AI that understands science better than experts who have spent their entire lives studying it. It's like we're watching the beginning of something monumental. And this is just the beginning. When you look at the ML, machine learning, benchmarks, O1 is absolutely dominating GPT-40. It's not even close. O1 is proving to be a beast in every single benchmark thrown its way. The same thing is happening with the PhD level science questions. One is just obliterating GPT-40. It's insane to see how fast AI is progressing, and it's hard not to wonder where it will go from here. Now the million dollar question is, how does OpenEye manage to train models like O1 to think more effectively? Let's start with what the report does tell us. It's a bit sparse on the mechanics, but gives us a clue. It highlights that OpenEye uses a large-scale reinforcement learning, RL approach, particularly targeting the model's chain of thought, COT. Reinforcement learning is the key here, and the emphasis is on teaching the model how to use its thinking process productively. This isn't just about producing an output faster. It's about getting the model to slow down and actually spend more compute both during training and test time so it can generate higher quality responses. Now let's break that down further. Since this is crucial, reinforcement learning RL, with human feedback, RLHF, is still at the core of this process. In traditional RLHF, you feed the model a prompt, and then the final response goes through a reward model, which gives feedback. That feedback is what adjusts the model. It's a closed loop, where the model learns what humans want to see in the response. Pretty straightforward. But when you add in chain of thought, caught, it gets more intricate. What they're doing with O1 is not just having the model spit out answers, they're feeding these intermediate thinking steps, the cot tokens, into the reward model. In essence, OpenEye is not only asking the model to get the right answer, but also to show how it's arriving at that answer. It's aligning the model not just on the final response, but on the entire process it goes through to get there. The cot steps are almost like breadcrumbs the model lays out before reaching the final output, and those steps themselves are evaluated for quality. At inference time, the model has learned to start generating these cot tokens. 
essentially taking longer to deliberate before it spits out the final response. That's what they mean when they say the model is spending more time thinking. It's not just brute force increasing the time spent. It's about spending that time more intelligently, refining each mental step. This also speaks to scalability. In the context of RLHF, the limits are usually tied to how much training compute you throw at it. But here, it's also about the test time compute, which is the deliberate, extended time the model spends thinking during inference. This type of scaling seems less constrained by traditional pre-training bottlenecks. Jason Wei, who worked on the famous Chain of Thought paper, brings expertise in getting models to break down complex reasoning processes into understandable steps, which ties directly into Kott's application here. So, this approach with RLHF plus Kott changes how alignment is done. Instead of just aligning the model based on its final answers, they're teaching it to align its thinking process. In practical terms, this means the model doesn't just aim for accuracy at the end. It starts by thinking aloud, and this entire thought process gets rewarded or adjusted during training. However, we still don't have the finer details, like how they train the reward model to judge the quality of these thought chains, or how human evaluators are brought into this loop. The research leaves that part relatively vague. To conclude, this is an evolving framework. Reinforcement learning, traditionally used to guide outputs, is now being used to also guide how the model arrives at those outputs. It's a big leap from just response-driven alignment to process-driven alignment, where Kot plays a critical role in helping the model think longer and better. That's how the Strawberry O1 model spends more time thinking by design. Is this really good? What's people's reaction? There's been so much hype around this Strawberry model. People initially thought it could be AGI, but I wasn't jumping on that hype boat. I waited for reactions, and yeah, some of us were disappointed because it can't solve the Riemann hypothesis or those famous NP problems. That's reasonable, especially with all the leaks claiming Q-star processes metacognition could break encryption and all that BS. But, to be honest, this model is by far the most advanced one out there right now. Some people might not agree it's AGI, but I'd call it AGI light. We're really not that far off from achieving true AGI. So this guy, Kyle Cabasares, he realized that O1 could write his PhD code, which took him a year, in just one hour. That reaction tells you something. Not many of us realize how close we actually are to AGI. Let's talk IQ tests. O1 scored 25 out of 35 on the Norway Mensa IQ test, which puts its IQ at around 120. That's a huge jump in reasoning abilities. Maxim Lott even tested O1 on a new offline test, to avoid data bias. And while the results weren't as high as the previous one, O1 still crushed other models in the same test. This isn't just an AI parroting back information. This is genuine reasoning. Lot even thinks we could see AI models breaking an IQ of 140 by 2026. Now here's where things get even more interesting. Terence Tao, probably the most gifted mathematician alive, gave O1 a test, his verdict. The model's capabilities are approaching those of a mediocre, but not entirely incompetent, grad student. That's a leap from previous models, which were more like a truly incompetent grad student. Teo thinks it might only take one or two more iterations before we see a model that can function at the level of a competent grad student, especially with some integration of computer algebra systems and proof assistants. I even tried throwing a complex analysis problem at O1 something GPT-4 struggled with. O1 did better? But I'll be honest, it wasn't perfect. It could get to a solution with a lot of hints and nudging, but it didn't generate the key ideas independently. Still, this is leagues ahead of what we've seen before. And Tao's right. It's just a matter of time before this tech hits a level where it can be genuinely useful for high-level research. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think is this model in the very early stages of AGI? Or is it just a small improvement over GPT-4, not even close to AGI? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye. See you in the next video.